According to the data we received from Captain Elson, the homeworld system is surrounded by a network of hyperspace inhibitors. The inhibitors are all heavily shielded and do not show up on any sensors. Elson has provided us with coordinates of the most vulnerable inhibitor station. Our goal is to destroy the station and create our own access point. Hyperspace successful. We are at the edge of the homeworld system. Elson's information was correct. This is the field generator. We must destroy it. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play Homeworld 1 Remastered. This is mission number 14, the bridge of... <sighs> Size. Why it's called that, I way. really don't know. Maybe because it sounds cool or something, right? Mysterious. Very avant-garde, if you will, but anyway. We are just going to take some time, get our fleet in order, because we do have to destroy this hyperspace inhibitor. It's a little more tricky than it sounds. We are going to build a probe, first of all, Group four. and Group try and scout out that inhibitor. Underway. First off, we're going to move our frigates and destroyers and all that a little bit forward. Strike group acknowledged. Anyway, so... If the, uh, in the classic version, if the Great Nebula missions, Report. the Cathedral of Kadesh and the Garden of Kadesh seemed pretty long simply because you had to, you know, sit around and harvest, wait, wait for the sell, uh, resource collectors to harvest everything. Yeah, indeed, those would be pretty long. But of course, in the remastered version, you just harvest and collect all the resources Roger. right after you hyperspace out of a mission, so it doesn't really matter. But even at that, whether you're playing the classic or the remastered version, this is definitely the longest mission of the entire game. If you so happen to follow the strategy that I am doing, and that others do as well, I'm sure. And that is basically capture everything. And there's a lot of stuff to capture in this mission. You may actually fall asleep whilst playing this mission <laughs> because it takes so long. It literally takes up several hours just to play it. So yes, it takes some time. Thankfully, through the magic of editing, I will uh, spare you the agony of trying to watch every single capture in this mission. So luckily, it'll only take about 35 minutes to play this. At least the video will. Standing by. Moving into formation. Anyway, let's get this seeker probe moving. I'm waiting for some research to pop up, but let's uh, send this probe, this is a seeker probe, probe away. off to do some seeking, some probing. I've never actually talked about the seeker probes, but really all it is is a sensor package that contains no engine. When it's given a target location, the onboard computer vents a small amount of contained plasma in it in a single controlled burst. Commanders will often deploy 6 to 10 probes on various vectors to search a sector when they arrive in an area. Alternatively, they can send 15 to 20 probes around to a known enemy position, which forces the enemy commander to devote resources to track them down. In the meantime, corvettes can be sent in amongst the various probe contacts, contacts to destroy uh, resourcing operations. And as you saw there, our probe just got blown out of the sky from, from an ion group cannon frigate. So we're going to build another one because we will need another probe. Research Division reports advancements in sensor fidelity which would allow us to determine the location of enemy ships. We advise commencing research immediately. All right, there we go. Sensors Array. New research Uses available. a complex suite of instruments to locate and track enemy ships at great distance. So for 500 credits, we are going to do that. 
and that will give us far greater accuracy in our sensors. And once we build it, I'll talk a little bit about it. In the meantime, I'm sending group four, our assault frigates, forward because, simply put, they are the fastest frigates we have left. I think uh, the puppeteer drone frigates are technically a little bit Ready. faster, but obviously those got destroyed during the last mission, so it doesn't really matter. Our assault frigates are the fastest frigates we have left. Okay, sensors is almost done researching. Research complete. All right, let Let's us build a sensors away. array. We only need one. Okay, we see there's an ion cannon frigate. There's several ion cannon frigates out there. Strike group and they have come into range of the assault frigates. Group 4 reports yep, enemy group contact. Group 4 has come into their range, so we're going to immediately pull them back. Ready. Sensors array complete. And boom, now that our sensors array is complete, notice that we see a lot more red Roger. on screen. We got a bunch of red diamonds. Okay, and there's the sensors array. So we have a whole Roger. bunch of red diamonds out there. Each of those is an ion cannon yeah, frigate. And we have some multi-gun corvettes. We have a hyperspace gate out there near uh, group four. You see that little, um, was that a hexagon? Yep, it says hyperspace gate. So this is part of my strategy. I'm going to use group four, the assault frigates, to go in there and lure those ion cannon frigates toward us. And group six I'm going to basically Move group Straight 10 up there, and group they're going to Understood. basically go and capture the pursuing ion Straight cannon frigates. In. in the meantime, I'm just moving up the rest of the fleet so that they're group in a position forward. in case they need to help us, because we Straight only have we have the maximum in. amount of 14 salvage corvettes in Ready. the remastered version. So we can only cap. It takes two to capture a single frigate, so we're only going to be able Ready. to capture seven of these. And as you can see, there's more than seven that are pursuing group four. So we're probably going to have to destroy a few. All right, so we'll just select two, send them after some of these frigates. And this is my capture, well, not really mine, but this is the capture everything strategy. Because surrounding this hyperspace inhibitor, if, you, if we go out to the sensors manager, there is a Confirm. sphere of Ready. nothing but ion cannon frigates surrounding it. And there are, I think, about 70 of these frigates around it. So we have a lot of capturing to do. My intention is to capture just about all of them. All right, so we've, we've got seven here with these uh, salvage corvettes. So we're gonna, we have some that are still in pursuit. We are going to have to destroy some of them, unfortunately. But that's just the way it goes. Strike group to battle positions. So once you get the sensors array up and running, then you can basically see every single enemy on the map. And when you go out to the sensors manager view, Strike you see all these red dots in this group mission. Again, that group big four, sphere ion of ion group cannon five. frigates group surrounding the hyperspace four. inhibitor. I believe in the classic version, I went back and looked at my old videos. There's something like 150 of these surrounding the inhibitor. Of course, the remastered version has lower unit counts, so there's like only about, I think, 70 in the game. So we're going to capture most of them, minus the ones we end up destroying. But if you do manage to capture all of these ion cannon frigates, then you're pretty much set for the rest of the game. There's only like two more missions after this, so you're pretty much set in terms of firepower. Acknowledged. Enemy frigate captured. An annoying thing though with the remastered version is that it doesn't show you the um, 
the view distance Enemy of the units captured. in the sensors manager. So when you go into the sensors manager, you notice there's like there's this blue sphere Enemy around our units. Captured. That's our right. That's our um, kind of view distance, right? Things that we're aware of, we can actually see. The remastered version does not show that around the individual enemy units, whereas in the classic version, it does. So in the classic version, when you go to the sensors manager, after you build a sensors array, it shows just all these little blue spheres all around the map. For every unit, every ion cannon frigate, everything. And so you can more easily see it. But unfortunately, in the remastered version, you do not see the enemy's view distance. And so it's kind of harder to tell really where things are Enemy frigate captured. right because they're just little red dots or little red diamonds and the skybox in this mission is decidedly an orange color so they kind of blend in it's kind of annoying anyway we are going to go after this hyperspace gate as well as Enemy these corvettes captured. and Reporting. get to work Enemy frigate captured group four reporting strike group prepare for assault Ready. All right, let's set group six Enemy to aggressive. Captured. Come on, let's get moving. Reporting. Defensive perimeter set. Enemy frigate captured. Well, we got some multi-gun corvettes here. Group four is going to work. The enemy has activated several standing hyperspace gates. Destroy the gates to prevent enemy reinforcement. All right, that's what we're doing. And a whole mass of strike craft have just emerged from the one directly in front of us. There are three hyperspace gates in this area, one directly in front of us, and one on each side of the inhibitor, outside of the sphere of ion cannon frigates. So. That's what we're going to do. Group two. group two, while you're at it, just shoot them. In fact, group two, help the uh, help group five group there. Five standing by. Confirm. Group six, what are you doing? Get in the fight. Group five Not seeing by. the kind of aggressiveness that I want. Fire. Moving in. Engineering report and damage. we just lost a support frigate, it looks like. Frigate lost. Or maybe that was an group ion four, cannon frigate. Yeah. Victory. Strike group receiving fire. Group two. Acknowledged ion cannon frigate heavily damaged. Group six reporting. Group five. Group six, are you waiting for an invitation? Fire. Hull breach. Hull breach. Supporting friendly units. Confirmed. Frigate lost. Strike group to battle positions. Acknowledged. I think group six is having difficult. Yeah, look at them. They're all a mess. Come on. Get yourselves in formation and get moving. Supporting friendly units. The performance of Group 6, our destroyers and Roger. missile destroyers in this mission, leaves attack. something to be desired. I'm not impressed. I'll be riding up their rather lackadaisical performance in my report. Captains of those destroyers may not, may be a little bit delayed in their next promotions, I'm saying. Ion cannon frigate heavily damaged. Attack vector laid in. Supporting friendly units. Strike group reports hostile contact. Frigate lost. Group 5 reports enemy contact. Enemy neutralized. Awaiting orders. Anyway, we're going to take care of this. In the classic version, we do. We are going to destroy all of these hyperspace gates, or at least the other remaining two. Now, in the classic version, every time you go after a hyperspace gate, it spawns a mass of strike craft that attack Roger. from it. So, kind of a strategy is to build several gravity well generators, have them guard the attacking frigates or destroyers or whatever that you send to destroy those hyperspace gates, activate them, and then once the strike craft emerge from the hyperspace gate, you just activate the grav well, they get stuck, and you can just pick them off. Thankfully, however, in the remastered version, that apparently is not a part of it, so you can basically just go after, you know, assemble a good strong force and go after the hyperspace gates. So a large wave of strike craft does not come out of hyperspace every time you attack them.
Salvage Corvette complete. Assume combat station. Group 4 has defeated the enemy. Docking with support frigate. I figure maybe I'll just capture that uh, support frigate there. That might be a, a good steal. Alright, so there we go. Yep, we got those two hyperspace Solid gates and the inhibitor directly center. And again, it's just, it's annoyingly kind of hard to see Reporting. the individual red dots of the ion cannon frigates around the inhibitor. I just, ah oh man, I, I wish the remastered version you could Roger. see the visual range around the enemy units. Those blue circles because it just it makes it easier for them to see them five standing by and since we're going to be capturing everything we need to be careful about where we're going Salvage Corvette complete. Copy. now there is sort of a uh, the reason why you can pretty much capture everything in this mission is because from my understanding the game engine was not really designed to have so many units uh, on the map itself and so they had to make some concessions and one of those was the artificial intelligence the way it works Normally, right, you, the, you know, when the enemy detects you, they'll, they'll start coming at you, but um, they will attack any unit of opportunity, any target of opportunity, as it were. However, in this mission, because there's so many ion cannon frigates on the map, when you get close to one of them and they start coming after you, they will solely focus on that unit that they see to the exclusion of literally everything else until that unit is either destroyed or scuttled or retired or whatever. So, which basically allows you to very easily bait them. So, I tried this strategy, this classic capture everything strategy, with a group of scouts or even like some proximity sensors, but I found that in the remastered version, ion cannon frigates are eerily good, in fact, amazingly accurate at shooting down even fast moving strike craft. Even proximity sensors. It's crazy. Like I would send a group of five or 10 scouts towards them set for evasive. So I figured, okay, you know, the, you know, something that an ion cannon frigate is weak against because right, if they bob and duck and dodge all around, then it won't be able to hit them, but no. Roger. Right? As they're flying towards their target or away from their target, the ion Forming cannon strike. frigates just blast them right out of the sky. Confirmed. It's like, wow, these things are awfully accurate <laughs> for ion cannon frigates. Right? Because it can only really fire in one direction, directly ahead of it. So, hence why I am using group four of the assault frigates to bait them in. The assault frigates have enough armor where they can withstand some punishment, and also the, they're faster than any frigate on the map. Anyway, we're sending another probe in to take a gander. We've gotten, we've got this big hole in this sphere now around the inhibitor. So we're going to send him in and do some recon.
Okay, well, after that rather overly long and somewhat pointless cutscene, I guess back in the day, again, in 1999, having an object that big, that massive in a video game was a pretty impressive feat. Standing by. Yeah, I guess they really wanted to emphasize that. It's like, hey, look at this big, huge object we have on the map. We're going to send uh, Corvettes out from Group 10 to kind of salvage some of the ion cannon frigates that are a little bit, Captured. you know, far away, secluded from others. Enemy frigate and now we have sent a group out. We're going to hit this hyperspace gate over here on the left side of the map. I figure, why not? Let's just take out the resource Enemy collectors while we're at captured. it. There's a carrier out there, too. Strike group, prepare for assault. Enemy frigate captured. Group 5, reporting. Engage capital ship. Enemy frigate captured. Group 6, engage capital ship. Group 9, standing by. Attacking capital ship. All right, let's go to work. You will notice as well, when we start sending the salvagers or the salvage corvettes after the ion cannon frigates they will start to target the salvage corvettes although thankfully their aim is absolutely utterly atrocious like for some reason they can't they can shoot down scouts fast moving scouts they can shoot down proximity sensors that are coming at them or running away from them but yet they have a very difficult time hitting salvage corvettes for some odd inexplicable reason I think we took care of that hyperspace gate. Quick and easy. Group Let's get rid of this carrier. Capital ship locked in. Group six reports victory. All right, they did it. Lovely job, gentlemen. All right, let's send them back. I'm going to set some waypoints, send them on a somewhat circuitous route back towards the mothership. And we're going to send them around and to the other side and hit the other hyperspace gate. I don't want to drag, I don't want to put them too close to the inhibitor because they'll start dragging the ion cannon frigates back towards us and we're not really ready for that. Again, just due to the limits of how many salvage corvettes we can build, so I am trying to actually capture as many of them as I can. Waypoint set. Group, All right, here we are on the other side of the map. Five. We're going to hit that Direct last hyperspace gate. Confirmed. Group 9. Attack run initiated. Ready. Let's get them. Standing by. Alright, Group 9, we don't really need you. We can take on this one hyperspace gate. We'll send the slow, lumbering, heavy f cruiser back to home base. In the meantime, we got some salvage corvettes going up to the top of the map to get. Two little ion cannon frigates just way up there. All right, blast it. Group five is 
All right, gone. Good. That's done over with. We're gonna capture a few more on care frigates. We still have some ones behind the hyperspace gate to get, or the hyperspace Enemy inhibitor to get. Captured. So, but we are going to assemble our main strike force and go Enemy and destroy captured. that hyperspace inhibitor in the dead Enemy center of the map. Captured. You kind of have to zoom in a bit on the red dots in order to make out the um, the red diamonds around them. That that's kind of a way it helps you see like okay, there's something Roger. there. Apart from that, you're just looking like spot the red dot, you know, playing that game. All right, here we go. We have pushed off, stepped off, and we are going to destroy this sucker. We got a heavy cruiser out there, a bunch of destroyers and frigates and things like that to contend with. Then we actually have to hit the inhibitor itself. We need to destroy each one of those um, parts of it, if you will. Now there are a couple of different strategies for this mission. The Prima strategy guide that came with the Game of the Year edition, which I still have and I'm kind of looking at, has this weird strategy that involves sneaking a strike force inside the sphere of frigates using cloaking generators. Stay with me now. I have no intention of doing that. Attack I obviously received. didn't. So I just wonder, like, God, why this really convoluted strategy, right? So many moving parts to it. Ready. Lock kind of violating the target. whole maxim of, you know, keep your operations simple, keep your orders simple and easy to understand. All right, stay with me now. According to Prima, the strategy they want All is to, you know, uh, assemble a strike force, build a bunch of cloaking generators, and sneak them inside to attack the hyperspace inhibitor. But no. Where's the escort? We need cover here. Too many moving Call parts, you gotta micromanage them, and reporting. it's just annoying. Anyway, we're just gonna, now that we've pretty much got the majority of the, the defending Iron Cannon frigates, we are basically in a position now to just attack, because they won't bother us, we're a bit too far away. Engineering reports damage. Like, once you attack, attack the hyperspace inhibitor, the Iron Cannon frigates surrounding it or at least the ones like near, near the bottom, near the top, near the back end of it, they won't attack you. You're too far away from them. Again, a limitation of the AI in this mission. And that they will only pursue something that comes within range. So as long as you stay out of range, then you'll be all right. Anyway, in the meantime, we're losing frigates here. While we get rid of these destroyers and this heavy cruiser. Group 5. Stabilize those offline. Group 6 has defeated the enemy. Strike group to battle positions. Group 6 caught last. Attacking capital ship. Hit. Hit. Damage report. Frigate lost. Acknowledged. We're losing, you know, a handful of eight. Ion Cannon frigates. Doesn't matter. We will more than make up for it with the number that we capture in this mission. I caught one. Strike group prepare for assault. Hit. Hit. Damage report. Frigate lost. Reporting. Group 6 reports victory. Ready. Frigate under attack. All right, looks like we got it. Strike group report. Very good. Let's start hitting the hyperspace inhibitor. Group six, strike group to battle. We shan't want anything inhibiting our hyperspacing. Luckily, as far as I know, the explosions don't cause any appreciable damage to anything nearby. And as you can see, we've got a couple of groups of group those captured battle. ion cannon frigates group helping us out. I put them into group five. Strike group prepare for assault. Group eight. In the classic version, I don't know if there's actually a limit to the size of the group, but when you put them all together as a group, they form just this huge mass of frigates. So I like to put them in sphere formation. And it's just this ginormous moving orb of ion cannon frigates moving around the map. But I guess. There's some limitation to the number of units in a group Ready. or in a formation in the remastered version, so you got these kind of Ready. two fun little groups of ion cannon frigates. It's a little bit weird. Order confirmed. Confirmed. Copy. Confirmed. Repairs initiated. Confirmed. 
I guess ideally I should be trying to capture some of these Report support copy. frigates. Again, because we're at our limit for the number of frigates we can build because we've salvaged or we've captured way right, more no. than we're technically allowed. I do recommend though that for the remaining two missions of the game, you do need at least like several, like maybe five or six support frigates to heal vessels up. Because you're gonna need them. Group five copy. Moving while engaging. Alright, last one, here we go. Group four. Group five reports victory. Strike group coordinates locked in. Group six. No problem. This is a cakewalk. Strike group coordinates locked in. Group the field nine surrounding copies. the homeworld system copies. has been shut Moving down. Hyperdrive online. Well, we're not going anywhere just yet. We still have stuff to capture. See those red diamonds at the bottom of the screen there? Yep. Those are some of the remaining iron cannon frigates. We're going to get those. Yeah, for some reason I thought they had some cloaking generators here, so that's why I brought along a proximity sensor. It turns out it doesn't matter. Five copies. Strike group moving into position. Group four. All right, we'll just capture stuff up and that'll be it. Ready. Understood. Repair target locked in. Roger. Strike group coordinates locked in. Stand down. We're on hold. Ready. Group 10 reporting. En route. Copy. So, this is the... Tidan resource collector. There's nothing much to we say about it aside from orders. the fact that it has a bow mounted PDA, but essentially by. it's the same as any other resource collector. This is the resource controller known as the Simsala class. What the name actually means is unknown. But apparently it has the exact same development history as the Kushan resource controller. We'll ignore that and pretend resource that it's collector something awaiting different. Orders. Resource collector awaiting orders. This is the Avatar class heavy cruiser. The most powerful warship in the fleet, Avatar heavy cruisers are more than four times the size of Revelation class destroyers. With six heavy turrets, each with a railgun nearly half the size of a frigate, the heavy cruisers also mount four twin ion cannons for an impressive amount of forward firing weaponry. With these weapons, avatars can direct the heaviest amount of firepower at their targets. With a complement of 150 engineers, gunners, and command crew, being assigned to a heavy cruiser is a surefire way to fast track one's career as they are virtually guaranteed to be at the center of the action. Thus, more ambitious officers generally vie for command positions aboard heavy cruisers. In fact, heavy cruiser assignments are more sought after even than positions on the mothership's bridge. Given that it's expected to be in the fight, heavy cruisers have some of the most advanced repair systems of any ship in the fleet. This allows them to draw heavy fire away from weaker vessels as well as sustain many hits as they direct fire on enemy targets. This is the Sajuk Core class ion cannon frigate. The Tidon ion cannon frigate had a design sequence that was so rapid that it enters service still under its project name of Weapon X, until crews rapidly coined the name Sajuk Core, an ancient phrase meaning God's Wrath. Immensely powerful, only the most experienced frigate crews were selected for these ships. Ion cannon frigates will often plow through formations of fighters to attack an enemy capital ship. While this Elan is certainly inspiring, it decreases the overall survivability of these frigates. Despite disciplinary action against the overzealous captains, there seems to be no increase in caution among Sajuk core crews. Attempts at mixing greener crews with more experienced ones 
has either had no effect or has demonstrated a drop in combat efficiency. Fleet commanders will often assign multi-gun corvettes or defense frigates to escort ion beam frigates as they dive into the thick of combat. This is the sensors array. The mothership's onboard sensors provide up-to-date tactical information on the local area only. However, it is limited in accuracy and range by size and power requirements. Not wanting to waste time with minor upgrades to the mothership's sensor suite, engineers proposed a dedicated ship to sensors that would work in conjunction with the mothership. Using a failed sub-frigate hull, Engineers added a large fusion power plant and a new generation of phased meson emitters. The emitters require vast amounts of power, but the timed decay of the subatomic particles allows for far higher sensor fidelity and further allows the fleet to gather data on the headings of all vessels in the area, as well as track all resource pockets within range. Although fragile in appearance, the particle accelerator vanes needed to generate the meson scanning beams, as well as the shielding required to keep them focused, actually contributes to the hull strength. The durability is useful, since the sensor's array has no onboard weapons, and would have to absorb hits should anything penetrate the fleet's defenses. With minimal power provided for propulsion, the velocity and maneuverability of the sensor's array is extremely limited. Now, mesons are actual subatomic particles in physics, which are composed of quarks and antiquarks. It is possible to generate them in particle accelerators in the real world. However, I'm not a physicist or a nuclear engineer or anything of that nature. I have no idea regarding the utility of mesons in sensors technology, but for the time being, let's just think of this as a giant passive phased array radar, like the spy radars aboard modern day naval ships. That's what I like to think of it as. Defensive perimeter All right, let's get out of here. On to the homeworld system. 